Hey everyone, this is Glenn from Video Trinkets and in this video I'll show you how I use the Align to Spline expression to animate my camera around objects. Let me show you how. Let's start with a plain object for the floor. Let's add a figure object and move it to the foreground. Hold down the control key to add a second figure object. Let's move that to the background. Let's change the floor dimensions to 800 centimeters by 800 centimeters to give our set more room. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit on the top view. Let's readjust our figure object now that we have more floor space. And we'll do the same for the background figure object. Now, it's always good practice to properly label your objects in the object manager. Let's call the foreground figure, figure main subject. As for the background object, we'll call that figure background subject. Next, let's activate the spline pen to draw out our spline in an arc shape. Let's add a null object and label it pivot point. I'm going to reposition the null object to align it to the main figure object. I'm using the top view to align on the x-axis and adjust the null object from the front view so we can adjust the height to the head of the main figure object. Let's zoom out a little on the front view. Go to Object Manager and select the spline object so we can make the necessary adjustments based on the points from the spline. We're going to be using the front view to make the point adjustments. Let's drag the point on the right side of the spline around the height of the main figure's head. Let's select the midpoint spline and drag it halfway up the first point. Varying the height points on the spline will add interest when we link the camera with the spline. Next, we're going to add the redshift standard camera into our scene. Let's go ahead and reset the camera's rotation to zero. We'll manually adjust the angle and position shortly. Let's go to the top view camera angle and move the camera's position closer to the spline's object by dragging the camera's z-axis closer to the spline. You don't have to do this, but it's just a force of habit for me. Next, we want to add two animation tags to the RS camera object. The target tag and the align to spline tag. Now, we'll link the animation tags accordingly, starting with Align to Spline. Select it and drag the spline object into the spline path input box in the tag properties attributes tag. Next, click on the target expression to select it. Drag the pivot point object into the target object. Next, we want to keyframe the position of the Align to Spline tag so we can animate the RS camera. Click on the keyframe selector to activate the keyframe starting at 0%. Use the slider to drag it to the right until it stops at 100%. And click on the keyframe to activate and set the keyframe to 100%. Click on the play button to see the result of the animation we just created. Since I find the animation moving too quickly, I'm going to extend the timeline to 360 frames or 12 seconds for a smoother playback speed. Here's the result of the playback. I just noticed that our background subject disappears from our perspective frame. So let's adjust that real quick. You may want to double check if yours is outside of the shot as well. If it's not and you're happy with yours, no need to make adjustments on your end. Alright, let's see the result with these adjustments. Okay, I can live with that. Now, 
To add some subtle interest to our scene, let's add some lighting that will achieve two goals. One, to light the subject, which is obvious, and two, use the lighting rig to add a parallax effect. Let's go to the RLS C4D folder and in the light items subfolder, I'm going to select the neon multi-tube lighting rig. Let's adjust the width to roughly 1000 centimeters and a height of 3000 centimeters. Let's jump out of the camera view and double check our scene. I'm going to widen the width of the neon lights just a bit. Let's now test the lighting using Redshift. Here's a link to a video where I demonstrate my recommended Redshift render settings for my projects. Go to Redshift menu and click on Redshift Render View. I'm going to dock the Render View window That seems way too bright, so we'll adjust the light intensity shortly. But for now, I'm going to play the animation. Okay, let's reduce the intensity. Since our scene is still too bright, I'm going to create a redshift material for our floor. Click on Create, Redshift, Material. Double click to open the shader graph so we can change the color. Let's also adjust the reflection roughness too, so it's not too glossy or reflective. Click play. The lighting is still a bit too bright for me, so let's reduce the intensity to 0.5. That looks much better. Next up, I'd like to add a little bit of bokeh to the shot. And to do this, let's click on the redshift camera tag. Click on the Boca tab and enable Override and enabled checkboxes. Before I forget, let's go to the RS camera object. Drag the null object pivot point into the focus object input box. This will be used to focus our virtual lens on the main subject and blur out the background. Back to the Boca tab. In the derive from camera, Change it to focus distance. Let's go with the setting of 7.5 or 5 as the circle of confusion radius. Taking a look at the render view, you can quickly see the change in the image. From my perspective, it already looks great. Let's play the animation. Let's do a test render. Go to render settings and create a render folder where we'll save the rendered files. Feel free to save your files where it's best for you. And be sure to select all frames. Now let's render this scene. And here's the final result. In this video, you learned how to utilize the Align to Spline expression to animate your camera along the spline object. You also learned how to set up the Redshift camera settings and enable the Bokeh feature to enhance your animated scene. Join me next time where I unlock more Cinema 4D features and techniques. This is Glenn from Video Trinkets, 
Thanks for watching until the end, and I'll see you in the next one.